Hey everybody, I hope you all had a good week. Um, we are going to talk today about chapter six in your Surf Safe textbook, which is all about preventing contamination through proper preparation techniques in the kitchen. So specifically, we're gonna talk about preventing cross-contamination and time temperature abuse. We're gonna go over um, proper criteria for thawing food. We're gonna talk about um, minimal internal temperatures and also proper ways to cool and reheat food to the correct temperature in the correct amount of time. So the first section of the chapter goes over proper preparation um, and they have a list of criteria that every food service operation manager needs to be aware of and also train all of their kitchen staff to also be aware of and practice. So making sure that equipment is clean and sanitized, um, making sure to not take out too much food at one time to prepare so that it's sitting out um, and then it's sitting in that danger zone temperature for too much time, which could cause the growth of pathogens. Um, and then making sure to return food to the cooler or other area of storage as quickly as possible. Again, making sure that it's um, maintaining that uh, proper temperature that will um, stop bacteria from growing. Um, and then they also talk about food additives, um, specifically uh, adding color, which is done in, um, in the culinary arts, uh, but making sure that the additives are approved by the local regulatory authority um, and they talk about never using more of an additive than it's allowed by law. Um, and then they also talk about sulfites, um, which I, I did wind up looking up because I didn't know that much about it. Um, and so according to um, a Canadian government uh, source, sulfites are sulfur-based substances used as preservatives to prevent spoilage and discoloration during storage and distribution of foods. Um, and in the fresh produce, or fresh produce industry, sulfur dioxide gas is commonly used to um, fumigate certain fruits and uh, this, um, this prevents decay during storage. And so according to this website, sulfites aren't dangerous for all, um, all, or sulfites aren't dangerous for everybody, but they, um, they can cause a lot of problems for people who do have a sensitivity to them. And so, um, so no kitchen should, uh, sell produce that was treated with sulfites before it's received. Um, and then you should never add sulfites to produce that are going to be eaten raw. So that was something I didn't know about. So I thought I would look that up. Um, assuming that maybe some of you don't know much about sulfites either. Um, and then finally, um, they talk about presentation, basically being honest, not serving food um, that looks any way other than it should. So um, not adding color to change the way a food looks to make it seem fresher than it is. Um, and so they talk about uh, food and color additives, color over wraps, and lights. Um, so now we can move on to proper thawing. So they talk about specific temperatures that food has to be held at, especially the time temperature controlled or TCS foods that we've talked out about throughout the semester. Um, so food in a cooler that is thawed needs to um, maintain a temperature of 41, 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Um, if you are going to thaw food um, using running water, you can do so uh, using clean, drinkable water uh, that's um, at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, the food should never go below 41 degrees Fahrenheit for longer than four hours. Um, you can also microwave to thaw food only if it's going to be cooked immediately after and then finally you can just thaw food as part of the cooking process. So then they go into proper pep preparation for specific foods. Um, so first they talk about 
produce and making sure that when you're preparing for produce you are preventing cross-contamination so um, making sure that fruits and vegetables never touch the same surfaces that have been exposed to raw meat, seafood, or poultry and we have talked about that a little bit earlier in the semester. Um, when washing produce uh, it's especially important to do so before cooking, cutting, or combining it with other ingredients um, they say the water should be a little warmer than the produce um, and then you can use certain chemicals to wash fruits and vegetables um, and you should just check with your local regulatory um, authorities to see what those requirements are. Um, when soaking or storing produce, produce um, do not mix different items or multiple batches of the same item. Um, with fresh cut produce make sure that it's again held at refrigeration at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Um, and then with raw seed sprouts, um, those can be served but should not be served to, um, to clients that um, are at high risk or are immunocompromised, so especially in hospitals, because um, those tend to um, go bad quicker than other produce. And then moving on to eggs and egg mixtures, they just talk about the difference between pooled eggs and pasteurized eggs and they recommend that if, again, you have um, high risk clients that you go for um, pasteurized eggs or um, egg products over uh, pooled eggs or using um, non-pasteurized eggs in your preparation. So then they talk specifically about um, high risk foods because they can't be reheated. So if you're um, using or if you're preparing chicken, tuna, egg, pasta, or potato salads, um, these have all been involved in foodborne illness outbreaks in the past. And um, so because you cannot reheat them, uh, you don't have a chance to reduce pathogens. Um, and so they can only be used and reused if they've been cooked, held, and cooled correctly. Um, and then they have a seven-day lifespan. So that's important to keep in mind. And then they talk about using ice, and um, some of this seems like uh, common sense, but if you're using ice to cool um, meat products, you shouldn't also use that ice to um, then cool a, a different food item that you're preparing. Um, and then they also talk about making sure never to scoop ice with glass because as we all know that could result in um, in glass winding up in somebody's drink which could be really nasty. So then they do talk about certain situations where um, you're preparing food in a certain way and um, you don't follow this criteria because of the way that you're preparing the food and so in that situation you use a um, variance document and um, they just list certain situations in which you um, have to produce that variance document um, and this image here is an example of the um, reduced oxygen packaging which is one of the points that they bring up for um, preparation practices that have special requirements. Okay, now we can move on to the proper cooking techniques that will, again, reduce the growth of pathogens. So um, they talk about checking temperatures and making sure that you are using the right tool for the job. So with um, thermometers, you want to make sure that you um, have a probe that's the correct size for the food that you're checking the temperature for and then making sure that you check the temperature in the thickest part of the food. Also make sure to take at least two readings in two different locations to make sure that your food really is at the right temperature. And then on page 6.10 of your book they have specific temperatures for um, different types of food and so uh, you can um, revert back to this if um, if you want to enter this into your 
projects at all or if you want to know what temperatures are considered safe for different types of food that you're cooking. Okay, then they talk about partial cooking or par cooking as it's referred to in um, most kitchens. So um, when doing a partial cooking, they just have five steps that you should follow um, to make sure, once again, that everything's at the right temperature. Um, and so you guys have gone through that, so I don't need to go over that in um, detail, except I think it's important to note the temperatures. So um, once again, making sure that after you've cooked it, the food is held at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below, and that when you're reheating the food, it needs to be at 165 degrees for at least 15 seconds before serving the food. Okay, then they talk about situations where um, you're going to have uh, certain time temperature controlled foods um, that are going to be uh, undercooked um, due to just the preference or the style of cooking or the um, particular meal. And so just making sure that if that is the case, um, like in your book, they use an example of semi-seared ahi tuna, so that's going to be partially raw. So you have to um, disclose in your menu that um, this is a risky food to eat so that um, your, your consumers are aware when they're making that choice. Okay, now we can move on to proper cooling and reheating procedures that everybody needs to follow um, and so they have these images on page 6.15 of your book that are helpful um, so first if you're um, cooling food especially these time temperature controlled foods um, you need to cool it from 135 degrees Fahrenheit to 41 degrees Fahrenheit within six hours and again this is going to um, slow the growth of pathogens um, and then following that you need to cool it if you are able to get it down to 70 degrees within two hours then you can take um, the next four hours to get it from 71 degrees to 41 degrees Fahrenheit and then they just talk about um, first like different situations or um, I guess like different consistencies so if you have a thick or dense food it's going to take longer to cool it down. Um, they also talk about the amount of food. So if you have um, a large amount of food, break it up into smaller containers and that will help it cool faster so you can get it down to that temperature uh, within the two hours necessary. Um, and then after you've divided it, the food into smaller containers, if that's what you need to do, they talk about different techniques that you can use to cool food including an ice water bath, a blast chiller, an ice paddle, or using ice or cold water as an ingredient. And then finally, methods for reheating food. So they have two situations. Um, one where you're reheating food for immediate service, um, and that can basically what they say is you can reheat the food to any temperature and then bring it right out to the customer or client. Um, however, if you're reheating food to for hot holding to be served um, at a later time then um, you have to like I said before with the par cooking get it up to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 seconds um, so that is the um, that's all the information from the chapter this week um, good luck on uh, your worksheet and as always let me know if you have any questions. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week.